Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you all. I'm Jung Kim, and I'm an assistant professor here at KDI School. So yesterday, when I did a rehearsal, I wasn't able to see anybody else because the light was so strong. Now I can see every one of your faces. So now I can see who is responsive and not responsive. So for those, those of you who are not responsive, then it's going to be reflected in your evaluation. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. So, um, you know, you, um, I'm a gender scholar, demographer, and sociologist. And today I will be talking about there to soar the power of a bird's eye perspective. So let me begin. You know, we live in a world filled with different attitudes and values and ways of living. And I'm sure most of you have encountered a situation where you have to engage with someone who holds vastly different perspective than yours. And sometimes it's too extreme and it can be offensive. I'm a gender scholar. I believe in gender equality, meaning that men, women, and other genders should not be discriminated based on their gender. However, in a professional setting, and mostly non-professional setting, I often receive comments that try to minimize my opportunities as a woman. For example, when I decided to pursue a PhD degree after a master's degree, I often get to ask when I'm going to get married, you know? And then some people argue that most women who pursue a PhD ended up being alone. They were right, but that's not the point. <laughs> <laughs> and then, when I was doing PhD, I was working really hard. But most people who, you know, know that, who doesn't know that what PhD student does, really, and then they thought that I'm a bit of unemployed, doesn't know what to do with their life, so they asked me again that I should look for partners and settle down. And when I become an assistant professor, got a position here at KDI school, you know what they say? Nobody told me what to do. Maybe because they thought it was too late, or maybe I believe that because now the professor title provides me power and authority. I think I'm the lucky case. On a daily basis, I hear stories and experiences from my friends that how they become the target of discrimination, hostility, and violence, because they're not lucky enough to have the resources that I enjoy. So, when you encounter in this situation, our first responses will be anger, defensiveness, and maybe urge to quickly change another person's perspective. And then maybe later you quickly realize that it's extremely difficult to change another person's view, and you get frustrated and feel powerless, because literally there's nothing you could do about it. Anger, frustration, often promotes you to become the exact same person who made you feel this way at the beginning, the haters. You will find yourself you know, trying to minimize the qualities of others, often calling them as immoral, dishonest, and unintelligent, often to feel better about yourself. Growing up in a patriarchal environment, I've been there. I'm coming from Busan, considered to be one of the politically conservative area. As a little girl, because I didn't have the resources that I enjoy right now, I feel constantly oppressed, frustrated. By the way, don't get me wrong about Busan. Busan is an amazing city. You know, the Busan Expo 2030. <laughs> and then, what happened? I moved to school to school, and I had a problem with many people, and I don't get along with others because I was a hater. That was me. And then th things took a dramatic turn when I went to college. Not necessarily because I was away from Busan, mostly because I discovered sociology. When I go to a dinner party, then somebody asks me, what are you doing? And I say, oh, I'm a sociologist, and I study gender. And you can quickly see that the other person is like, ooh, oh, oh right? <laughs> but I'm telling you here that sociology saved my life. If you go to Intro to Sociology 101, what do you learn? The first lesson is that nobody is 100% isolated from your surroundings. Meaning that structural forces, external forces, shape who we are and how we think. You might think that you are different, 
but you are not. I guess it's quite the opposite from the, today's theme, daring to be different. You are not different. There are hundreds of people who share similar experiences, similar ideas, because they are situated in a similar context. Sociological perspective encouraged me to see from a bird's eye perspective and see the common patterns among human behavior. In a way, it liberated me from anger because now I get to see why I was angry and then why the person who made me angry was behaving such way. So it encourages me to have empathy, not to just myself, also everyone, including one who is considered to be one of my most fierce opponents. Now, my mission is to use this emancipation tool to solve the bigger issues, not just for my own personal growth. This is what I'm working on. These days, in the recent years, hostility, hostile attitudes towards minorities, including immigrants, Muslims, and people from different races and religion and gender. In South Korea, recent years, there has been growing debates, ideological debates over the gender issue between young men and young women. We often call it the gender wall because it was so extreme. They fuel strong hatred against each other. Because the hatred is so deep, and now, it becomes the reason why young adults don't want to get married and have children together. Look at this graph, and you can clearly see that the public opinion between young men and young women are highly polarized. If you ask women in their 20s, 70% of them reported that society discriminates against women. On the other hand, same exact 70% of men in their 20s reported that society discriminates against men. And this is not just one example. This is just one example. There are multiple items where men and women are highly polarized in terms of our attitudes towards feminism, men and women. And of course, this trend is strongly connected to the rising misogynistic attitudes and misandristic attitudes. Misogynistic attitudes here means the hatred towards women, and then misandristic attitudes means hatred towards men. When you see this trend, the quick response will be, what's wrong with these people? And then second is like, why are they consuming so much hatred? They must be an economic loser who have nothing else to do at home and just pouring their frustration, the miserable life into keyboards hiding behind the screen, you know, by hating others. And then I also see some comments that is considered to be extreme, that biological men as a species are failure or biological women as species are failure. There's a lot of hatred. But as I mentioned before, I decided to look a different path. The one encourages me to see from a bird's eye perspective and seek for understanding. Now, I use data, mostly on a general population, and try to understand why some men or women are particularly prone to consume hatred, and in what circumstances that hatred flourish. Now I ask why. One of the most interesting findings directly challenges the conventional wisdom that it's economic loser story. In any of my study, I don't find that unemployed men or men with unstable employment are more likely to be misogynistic compared to men who enjoy more benefits, highly educated or have more higher income. This is what I found, find from multiple social surveys the downward mobility. Here, the x-axis refers to the downward mobility, meaning that respondents believe that their life chances, their current socioeconomic status, compared to their parents' generation, have diminished dramatically. And then the y-axis shows the proportion of people who are considered classified as high misogynist. As you can see from here, the downward mobility is highly positively correlated with the probability of being classified as high misogynist. If you look at this minus six on the one side of extreme, suggesting that the person who believed that their life chances become more favorable compared to their parents' generation, only 15% are classified as high misogynist. On the other side of the extreme, the person 
who believe that their life chances, their current status are steeply declined compared to their parents' generation? 40% nearly. That's a huge difference. And this means that even men with the same qualifications, same education, same level of income, and all other factors, if one perceives that their life chances have declined dramatically, then that person is more likely to become misogynistic. From this graph, from this finding, one key takeaway is that, first of all, not economic loser story. And then second is that, you know, the biological man as a species, their failure story, because there's a huge variations within men. And then last key takeaway is downward mobility. This is an important variable where we need to start our conversation to solve the problem, not the hatred, or not the men, or not women. We are currently living in a world where hatred becomes one of the most powerful tools for some politicians who seek to manipulate this social division, social polarization, to gain their own benefits. Do not fall into the trap of hatred, and do not let yourself open to manipulation by those others in power. Instead, I urge you to stay in the middle, dare to soar above the ground, and seek for understanding. Thank you.